we have covered six of the nine gifts of the Spirit. And I, I really wanted to, to, to teach on this. And if you missed any of them, you do know they're on the website, EvansvilleCrosswalk.com. And uh, you can catch every sermon teaching all the way from January till now. And I don't know how long we'll keep them on there. I don't know how many we can keep on it. But uh, if we go up to a year, we'll try to do that and we'll start over again. Or maybe every six months we'll start over. But I've got to talk to our web guy here to find out about that. But at any rate, um, uh, I, you know, the, Paul said, I would not have you ignorant concerning uh, the spiritual gifts. That's a little paraphrase. But, and uh, Paul doesn't want us ignorant. I don't want us ignorant. Amen. And I haven't really de delved deep into it. But I'm trying to give you the basics of the nine spiritual gifts of the Spirit. And uh, again, we covered six of them. Today, we're going to cover the final uh, three gifts of the Spirit. And uh, before we do that, though, can anybody tell me uh, what the first six are? First three. Somebody help me out. What are the first three? The gift of the word of knowledge. Of wisdom, discerning. discerning of spirits. Okay, what were the next three? The gift of faith, the gift of healings, and the gift of miracles. Amen? So today, we're going to begin by talking about those that fall in the category of utterance gifts. Now these are verbal gifts. And the first is the gift of prophecy. So that's what we're going to talk about this morning, these verbal gifts. Then the second is the gift of diverse tongues, and then the gift of interpretation of tongues. So we can assume by what Paul says that prophecy is the number one gift. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 1, it reads, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. So here again, I want to emphasize that it tells us to desire spiritual gifts. So it's okay to desire gifts, amen? So, hey, well, I sure would like to be using the gift of faith. There's nothing wrong with that, amen? I sure would like to be using the gifts of healing. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome just... And it is awesome. You know, whenever God uses you uh, to to bring healing to somebody through that supernatural gifts of healing. Or, uh, as we're talking about today, with a word of prophecy. It's, it's awesome to be able to give a word of prophecy to edify somebody, to encourage somebody. So he says, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. He puts emphasis on prophesying. How that is a, a very important gift. So what is the gift of prophecy? Well, it is... When you get a direct word from God for someone, God gives you a word to share with somebody else. On occasion, while praying for people, I've been given a word for the person I'm praying for. And that's a pretty awesome thing. You know, you're just praying along and all of a sudden, I mean, this thing just comes out of nowhere to, to share with this person. And, and you know it's from God because you just like have this overwhelming urge to tell them that. It's not like, hey, this might be a good thing to say. It's not like that. It's like, it's like you know, whenever you got a secret and you just busted to tell that secret. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, man, I just ripped. Or, or a surprise. You know, I remember whenever, uh, you know, Jake and Charity's wedding, we, uh, we all went together and got, her, got them that uh, uh, trip to Disney. You know, I mean, we couldn't wait to tell that to them. And that's kind of what it is when you get a word, you just have this overwhelming desire to tell this person what the Lord says to him. Amen? So, uh, in my case, uh, I didn't really know what I was saying until I said it. Because it really wasn't my words. It wasn't like, you know, I think I'll say it this way, or, you know, I think I'll tell them this. No, it was just, I was listening to what I was saying as I was saying it. I mean, it was just God was using my lips to share that word with that person. The Bible tells us that God uses the gift of prophecy to speak edification, exhortation, and comfort. Isn't that a good thing? Yes. 
It's an awesome thing. Matter of fact, just look at 1 Corinthians 14.4. I'm not making it up. 1 Corinthians 14.4 says, But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. So that's, that's uh, uh, what God wants to bring to that person and He wants to bring that word to that person through you. Prophecy is also to confirm what has already been given to somebody. You know, you may be thinking, you know, I really think I ought to do this, but I'm not really sure. You ever had those kind of thoughts? And, and you pray about it, Lord, is this what you want me to do? You know, I really want to, I really feel like this is, but I'm not really sure. And then somebody comes up to you and says, you know, the Lord just wants me to share with you because this has been, it, it, it's been deposited in you to share with that person. And, and they go, wow, I've been praying about that. And that encourages both of you, amen? You're like, wow, I really did have a word from God. And and because sometimes, you know, you gotta you gotta step out in faith, because it's not always the same. It's not always the same for every person, amen. No, I mean I can't get up here and tell you this is the way God does it every time. No, that's the way God does certain things through me, but he may do it a little differently through you. But as long as it doesn't go against scripture, we're okay, amen. amen. So we want to compel. We want to be used to confirm what God is speaking to somebody else. Prophecy can also include predicting future events, kind of like they did in the Old Testament. You know, uh, they, they would say, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. God can use you because the Holy Spirit, being God, knows everything. Amen? And He can tell you, matter of fact, the Bible tells you, He'll tell you things to come. And He may use you to give a word to somebody, maybe as a warning, maybe as an encouragement, counsel, confirmation, instruction, and even correction sometimes. However, here's the key, church. The key is this. To make sure that it lines up with the Word of God. If it goes against the Word of God, it's not from God. God will never go against His Word. So if God, if somebody comes up and tells you something God's telling you to do, and it's, it's not a biblical, then that person is not speaking on God's behalf. They may think they are, but they're not. And if you ever feel like you're getting something that doesn't line up with the Word of God, then say, no, that's not God. Because God will not go against His written Word. Amen? 1 Thessalonians 5, 19-21 kind of tells us this. It says, do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophecies. You know, there's some folks that despise prophecies. It says, here, here's the key. Test all things. How do you do that? You line it up with the Word of God. That's how you test all things. Then it says, hold fast to what is good. So, if somebody, you know, well, what, what if somebody gives a word that's not from God? Then you don't hold fast to it, amen? You just say, out with the garbage. Because if it's not from God, it's garbage. But if it's from God, apply it to your life and let it edify you, encourage you, correct you, whatever it is. Let God speak to you through that person. Amen? All prophecy will always line up with the Word. If it does not, it should be immediately rejected. Don't even consider it. God will never go against His Word in delivering a Word because He's not going to go against His own Word. Amen? Again, we've read desire spiritual gifts. So if you, des if you desire prophecy or, or to be used uh, in prophecy, let God know. Tell Him that you're willing. Tell Him you want to be used to minister under the unction of the Holy Spirit to bring forth a word to others that will encourage, edify, or whatever the case may be. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Then, just simply be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. A lot of times the reason we're not used is because we're not sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you've got to get quiet before God. You know, sometimes in our prayer lives, we well, God, this, 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 and this, and we never just get quiet and just let God speak to us. Let God lead us. You might be surprised what God would lead you to do if, if you got quiet enough. To, to feel or hear the prompting of His Holy Spirit. Secondly, the second, or actually the, the seventh 
gift. It's different kinds of tongues. <clears throat> Speaking in tongues. There are a couple things I like to state here. First of all, there are two types of speaking in tongues. The first is our prayer language. We are, when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we're given a prayer language. And that's not all the baptism is about. That's a pretty cool thing. Amen? We can talk in tongues and we can pray in tongues at will. It doesn't have to be a special unction. It's just something God's given. All I know is this. Before I was baptized in the Spirit, I couldn't do it. After I was baptized in the Spirit, I couldn't do it. And that's, that's all I can say. The second kind of speaking in tongues is what chapter 14 is referring to here. And that is giving a word from God by the Holy Spirit through the gift of tongues. God is speaking through you in an unknown tongue. Then the Holy Spirit will give you or somebody else the interpretation for what you spoke. That's another gift, the gift of interpretation. Now this language may, may be a known language, or let me say it this way, it, it may be a known language somewhere, but it's not known to you. It could be some far off tribe somewhere, and you're speaking their language. Or the Bible also says it could be a heavenly language. You know, the, the language of angels. Uh, 1 Corinthians speaks of uh, tongues of angels. Now here, here's a thought that occurred to me. And <clears throat> when we are present here, we are looking around at a natural realm, a physical realm. But what you don't see is that there is a spiritual realm here as well. Right here in this very room, right now, there are angels present. Now, we're unaware of them because they're in a different dimension, if you will. Now, you see, the natural mind cannot comprehend that. But it's true nonetheless. You know, it says we have guardian angels. The Bible says that angels are ministering spirits to those who are to inherit salvation. Well, what good are they if they're just up there somewhere doing nothing? It's true. No, they're here. They're around us. We can't see. I mean, there may be 10 or 12 right here in this room. They're watching us, but we can't see them. That's pretty awesome in itself. But here's, here's a thought that just occurred to me. You know, somebody starts speaking in tongues, or somebody gives a word in tongues. Can you imagine an angel going, hey, now they're talking our language? <laughs> <laughs> there have been people that have seen angels. I know of reputable people. You know what I mean? There are some of those kind of people. You know what I mean? It's like, well... They're just flakes and everything's way out there somewhere. And, and, but, but I know of reputable people, people who don't make things up, have seen angels. I've never seen one. With my eyes, I've never seen them. I've felt their presence before. I've heard them before. But I've never seen them. But they're here. Now, there are a couple of advantages to praying in tongues. First, sometimes... We may not know how to pray about a certain situation. And that's one thing I like. Is because sometimes, Lord, I just don't know what to pray, so I just pray in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I know that the Holy Spirit is guiding my prayers. He's guiding those words to meet that need. That's when it's great to pray in tongues. When you speak in tongues, the Holy Spirit is speaking through you. The second advantage to praying in tongues is... It edifies and builds you up. That's what it says. That when you pray in the Spirit, it edifies you and it builds you up. And I remember the very first time I prayed in tongues. And I mean, I just wanted to jump up and down. I got so encouraged and edified. It's like, woo! I mean, I just, you know, I was about 19 years old. And it was just an awesome time. I was there praying in my living room. You know, I, I used to kneel down in front of the couch. And that's always, you know, that's how I would pray. And, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, I just started praying in tongues. Whoa, wow. And then I started interpreting what I was saying. I don't even know if this is biblical. You know what I mean? I, I, I was learning all this. was all new to me. I didn't know much about it at all at the time. I was a good Baptist boy. Amen? Nothing wrong with Baptists. But, you know, in the church I grew up in, they never talked against it. They just never talked about it. You know? And uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Another reason that you want this gift is for emergency situations. Since the Holy Spirit is God, 
the Lord Himself, this means that He can perfectly see into the future. I remember about 20 years ago, is that about right, when I went to Mexico? I'm getting better. I used to say six or seven years ago, but it was like 20 years ago. Went to Mexico. Life-changing experience. Uh, I won't get into that right now. But I simply want to say we were, uh, we were in a 15-passenger van. Has anybody ever been to Mexico? Driving's crazy there, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of like you get to here to there and there to here any way you want. You know, I mean, it's just everybody's going every direction. There's no lines. There's... You know, where we were at anyway, that's the way it was. Well, anyway, we, were, we had a full van, 15-passenger van, and we we're, were sitting, getting ready to pull out, and all of a sudden, Linda, I believe was her name, in the very back of the van just, start, just loudly started speaking in tongues real fast. And when she did that, the driver got startled, hit the brake, and a bus went flying by. He would have pulled out right in front of that big bus. But I believe the Holy Spirit gave her the unction at that very moment. I mean, she just blurted out real loud. And it stopped us from being hurt or killed. Praise God. So God can use that in emergency situations. You've heard of people talk about being woke. They wake up in the middle of the night just praying in, in the Spirit. And then later on they meet a missionary or someone and says, what they, when was that? I was getting ready to... I had a gun to my head getting ready to shoot and all of a sudden they just quit and walk away. You see, the Holy Spirit can move in those kind of situations. For some reason, there are people who are against tongues. I mean, man, they, they just get mad about it. All them tongue talking church. Don't get involved in a tongue talking church. I mean, they just really get upset about it. Some say, well, you know, that's passed away. I don't see that from reading the Bible. Others say, well, that's just emotionalism. Well, again, all I can say is before I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I couldn't do it. After I got baptized in the Spirit, I couldn't do it. I don't think emotion has a whole lot to do with it. Then there are others that go as far as to say it's of the devil. Well, I don't, you know, I know a lot of folks that, that speak in tongues and, and their life used to be a devil, but now it's very godly. So I don't see how tongues can be of the devil. Well, it can be, but not when you're a Christian. Amen? I want to just take a moment to share a few verses uh, from the Bible about uh, speaking in tongues before we move on. Now, I'm just going to go through these very quickly. 1 Corinthians 14.2 There's a whole lot more than this. But for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands Him. However, in the Spirit, He speaks mysteries. Then 1 Corinthians 14.5. This is Paul. He says, I wish you all spoke with tongues. So listen, even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues. But listen here, unless... Everybody say unless. unless. Unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Yeah. Again, you, there's a prayer language which will edify you whether you know what you're saying or not. It will edify you. But you know, if I just stand up here and speak in tongues for half an hour, you're just going to look at me. Unless I go, unless the Holy Spirit gives me the gift of interpretation or somebody else, and they say, this is what the Spirit just said. And then they give you interpretation. Then it's the same as prophecy. Because you have understanding. Do I understand why he's saying one's greater than the other? Okay. Then uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 13 and 14. Therefore let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Then again in 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, there it is, but had not love, I have become as a sounding brass symbol. You know, you're not spiritual just because you speak in tongues. That really doesn't make you more spiritual. You know what makes you more spiritual? That you're walking in love. Yeah. That matter of fact, Jesus, that Jesus said, this is how all men will know you're my disciples because of your love one for another. Matter of fact, I'm really believing that's what I'm going to talk about next week, just love. You know, love. Uh, 
it's, it's, it's the main ingredient in unity, it's the main ingredient in evangelism, it's the main ingredient in every aspect of God's kingdom. Love. If we don't have love, it says we're like a, a, a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. We're just making noise. You know, if we don't have love, we're not going to draw anybody into the kingdom. You know, they don't want you to tell them how much you love them. They want you to show them how much you love them. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 14.22 Therefore, tongues are a sign not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. I remember... I remember uh, years ago when we pastored at uh, uh, Petersburg, Indiana. And uh, kids were just real little. Charity was about, I don't know, five or six at the time. Maybe, no, a little bit older than that. Six, five or six. Well, anyway, one of Charity's friend, friends and her mother came to church. You remember what I'm talking about? And. As far as I knew, she wasn't a Christian. She was. She was like a Baptist or something. You know, but I'm not, and I say I'm never bad mouthing any denomination. It's just they're not aware of you know some of the gifts and things of that nature. Well, anyway, I mean, we had one of those kind of services. I think, oh, great. I mean, the day somebody like that's coming, you know, and, I mean, people are falling out the floor and people are speaking in tongues. I mean, this did happen all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of those Sundays. I thought of all Sunday, she's going to think we're crazy. She won't let her daughter run around with charity anymore. At the end, she came up. She goes, that was awesome. I mean, you can just feel God in this place. So you never know, amen. So you never not do something. Here a while back, we were talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. We had some visitors uh, uh, from a, a friend of Cheryl's. She works with it, and I thought, the thought, maybe I'll preach on something else. <laughs> But I, I'm a believer in if God showed me to do something, I'd do it no matter what. You know. But come to find out, they, they, they believe. You know, and, uh, and so it wasn't a big deal anyway. And it's not a big deal because it's the truth. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. For some reason, again, there, there are people that are just against tongues. And I don't understand it because Scripture you know, is pretty plain. You really got to explain it away in order not to believe. And a lot of uh, theologians are good at that. They're good at explaining away. I remember, I won't get into this, but I remember one time I was talking to a man and I said, Well, you know, you just show me in, in the Bible. I mean, I, I'm teachable. Just show me where it says it. And I'll, I mean, I'll consider it and I'll, 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 I'll study it. He goes, Well, it's not really in the scripture, it's more of a concept of thought. Mm. Uh -huh. I thought, well, Concept of thought? Is that how you interpret Scripture? No. What does what saith the Word of God? Amen. And that's what we have to stand on. I mean, if a person doesn't want to do it, that's fine. But don't go talking bad about it just because you don't understand or for some reason you're against it. Amen. Okay, then finally, the interpretation of tongues. Um, the Holy Spirit will give you the interpretation of tongues either that you gave a word in tongues yourself or maybe somebody else gave that word uh, you know, in a church setting. Uh, and there are two main verses that talk about this, the gift of interpretation, and that, that comes into play with the gift of tongues. And the first one is 1 Corinthians 14, 27 and 28. And it reads, If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. And let him speak to himself and to God. So there's some instruction on it. Now, have you ever been in this situation? You really feel the unction to give a word in tongues? You know, what if nobody interprets? <laughs> but, and I've been there before. Matter of fact, in Boscobel, you know, somebody gave a word in tongues and you know and then everybody's looking at the pastor now as I'm going to share in a moment I mean God has used me in that gift some but I mean not like on a regular basis and and so I'm like okay God <laughs> it gets real quiet for and a minute seems like an hour you know when you're waiting for somebody to come up with that word and finally somebody's like 
gives, thus saith the Lord, you know, oh, praise God, <laughs> you know. And uh, uh, one time it happened, somebody gave a word and, and nobody ever gave the interpretation. And I'm a believer in being authentic. I mean, you know, I'm wordy enough, I could start talking and people would believe I'm giving an interpretation. I'm just being honest with you. I mean, I could do that. I could say, thus saith the Lord, He loves you, He has a, a hope and a future for you. And I mean, you know, I mean, you could do that. We all probably could do that. But that doesn't mean it's God, amen? You've got to have that unction of the Holy Spirit where you just know this is what God is saying. And uh, nobody ever said a word. So I said, it's okay. You know, and I said, I believe somebody has the word, but you know, you're, you're just maybe not bold enough right now to step forward and, and give that word. But I believe somebody had the word for that. You know, that's to comfort the one that was being obedient and give them the word in tongues. I don't want them to feel like a fool. And the next day, a young lady came into my office. Pastor, I had that interpretation yesterday. I feel so bad. You know? I said, that's okay. You know, don't, don't beat yourself up over it. Just, uh, you know, if you feel like next Sunday you'd like to give it, just share it with us next Sunday. Or tell me what it is and I'll share it. You know? So we, we worked it. I can't remember exactly how we worked it out. But you see, it's nothing to beat yourself up over. You know, sometimes we're going to miss it. But as long as it doesn't go against the Bible, you know, it's not going to hurt anybody. Uh, sometimes we've got to step out in faith to do certain things God calls us to do, whether it's giving a word in tongues or giving the interpretation or whatever it may be. And then uh, uh, the next one, uh, it says, Therefore, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 13, and 14, Therefore, let him speaks in a tongue, pray that he may interpret. For I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So the first verse has to do with interpreting a tongue that is done in a church service. And the second verse is showing that the Holy Spirit can give you an interpretation for what you spoke in an unknown tongue when you're praying by yourself. And again, I shared this uh, just a moment ago. When I first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I began to speak in tongues, and God gave me the interpretation. That was before I had any knowledge whatsoever of what was going on. I just knew that you're supposed to ask for this. They told me, and I did. And, and after some time, I received it. And, uh, you know, it's happened since then, but I'm going to be honest with you, it's not a common thing. I mean, I like to pray in the Spirit. But, you know, it's not like every day God tells me what I'm praying. I mean, every once in a great while, He'll give me an interpretation of it. I don't understand. You know, that's something the Holy Spirit does as He wills. You know, we don't really have control over that. We can just say, I'm open to do whatever you want me to do, but He's the one that does it as He wills. Amen? Yeah. Um, again, you know, like, like giving a word in tongues. Here's the funny thing. I was probably used more in the gifts when I wasn't pastoring than when I was. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm thinking about what I need to do and, and so forth and whenever I'm just sitting, you know, the Holy Spirit can speak to me easier in that way. Now, I do believe I get prophetic words while I'm preaching a lot of times. I just don't stop and say, thus saith the Lord. I just speak out what I believe the Lord sent telling me to say. And I think much of what I say is, is like that. But, uh, uh, you know, it was about a year or so that I wasn't pastoring and it seemed like of course, the gifts flowed in that church quite a bit. And uh, there's just an unction that comes upon you. And, uh, you know, I've given a word in tongues a few times, and, and I've given the interpretation a few times. And uh, it's awesome. You know, it's really awesome to be used of God in the flow of the Spirit that way. So I want to close with this. In closing, be open to what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Amen. Just be sensitive to that. And if you'll do that, you'll lead a productive spiritual life. Amen? Don't get all hung up. And never beat yourself up. You know, that's not what God wants. God, whatever God wants you to do, He wants you to have joy in doing it. You know, the Bible says He'll give you the desires of your heart. And, and you know, we can look at that two ways. We can look at it like He'll give me what I desire, or we can look at it He'll give you the desire. He'll give you the desires of your heart. And He can place a desire in your heart. He may place a desire for a certain spiritual gift in your heart. And whenever you say, Lord, use me, you might find yourself stepping out 
and adding a whole new dimension, not just to your spiritual life, but to the life of your church. Amen? Amen. I mean, it's not all about the pastor. Okay? It's, it, it, it's, we are a body, and, and it's body ministry. And, and I want you to know this. I'm, I'm praying about it, but I want to pick a couple of you out, at least a couple, instead of me standing up here to pray for people. You stand up here and pray for people when they come up. Amen? Because, again, I don't want it to be all about me. Sometimes in small church, it is a one-man show. It's not necessarily because the one man wants to do it all. It's just that's kind of the way it works. But I want, I want to see God using you to minister to others. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. Father, again, we thank You for Your goodness. You are an awesome God. Lord, we thank You for the truth that You've shown us in Your Word concerning these spiritual gifts. And Lord, I just pray that we would be open, that we would be sensitive to Your leading. Lord, we ask that You would direct each of us and guide us. Lord, that we might be used in a great, mighty way for Your glory. And we give You all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said... Amen.